There he is. First things first, let's get the obvious out of the way. When you buy a vehicle that isn't known for reliability, you're typically gonna pay more maintenance costs. And this has changed significantly in the most recent few decades because the cost to repair vehicles is a lot more than it used to be. You're not talking your, you know, simple, oh, my alternator just went bad. Ah, oh, shit, that's $300. Oh, I need new struts. I like I need tie rods. I need like these things don't cost the same that they used to. You know, I did struts in my car and I could source them for 300 something dollars. When you have adaptive suspensions, now some of which are pretty reliable, uh, others like for instance, a Range Rover where pretty much everything is unreliable. The cost to replace, you know, some components on that, compressors and whatnot. Uh, can easily get into the thousands. It's sometimes hard to see a repair that isn't in the thousands. And I, I mean, it bothers me because there are so many cars out there that are so, they're, they're just great. They're so fun to drive, they're so comfortable. They're just all around good cars. For instance, the Alfa Romeo Giulia and Giulia Quadrifogal Fogal are great cars and win comparisons and awards all the time but owners report repetitive problems causing them to spend much of their time in the shop. Car and driver had one of them as a long-term tester and said that they went from recommending people to buy it, to recommending to lease, to just not recommending it at all. Now, quick disclaimer, I'm just trying to explain why reliability matters and help inform buyers. In the end, I've learned that if someone likes something that is notoriously unreliable, that's fine. That doesn't make them dumb. I like a lot of these cars too. I just want people to understand what they might be getting themselves into before they buy it. Anyway, Alfa Romeo and Fiat Chrysler were not concerned with the longevity of their cars. They were thinking about how can we make the best product? And this is also reflected in resale values. You know, say you want a new Volvo XC90. You buy it for $70,000. You buy a, you know, a very nice, Volvo XC90. It has a turbocharged and supercharged two liter engine. Or say you buy it and then your warranty has, you know, covered your ass plenty of times. And then that three year 36 or that four year 50 is about to run out. Well, you get scared. You decide to trade it in. You're alarmed at the fact that now your $70,000 Volvo XC90 is worth 38 grand or 35 grand or something even lower. This is a very common thing. I've spent some of my time at a new car dealership as a sales rep, and this, this happened. They're disgusted, and they think that we're ripping them off, but that's what Kelly Blue Book says. That's what Edmund says. These cars are not worth much. Don't get me wrong. The XC90 is a great vehicle. It even won Motor Trend SUV of the Year when this generation came out. But it's hard to recommend it to somebody when the resale is that bad. Even if they have the money, there's another problem that resale brings up that I will get into later. If you're beginning to think that big issues plague only luxury cars, you would be very wrong. To name a few off top, we have Honda's reoccurring issue with the Odyssey's automatic transmission, along with their more widespread infotainment system problems, something that Cadillac has trouble with too. Hyundai released a dual clutch transmission that has a lawsuit for its issues against it, same thing happened to Ford. Hyundai and Kia also have two and 2.4 liter engine failures that got a huge recall after widespread problems. GM caught a case with the 2.4 Ecotec motors for consuming way too much oil. Toyota also had an excessive oil consumption lawsuit with their 2.4 liter engines. Subaru has had issues with their head gaskets on several of their models in the past. Nissan CVTs are widely known for big issues, and Fiat Chrysler products largely fall to the bottom of the class in reliability. This only scratches the surface, too. And, I mean, there's probably many more lawsuits out there uh, and many other issues that don't have cases. These problems are also all from the last 10 years, and I'm not even going to get into luxury brands. My point? Every manufacturer has issues. Granted, some have way more than others. Toyota and Lexus do not take many chances on their cars, and they usually build a quality product. 
Most manufacturers have models that are dependable too, but you should always search for lawsuits or common problems on the specific model or engine transmission before purchasing. Also, how a vehicle has been treated is huge in reliability. Regular maintenance and not driving like an ass always extends the life of any car noticeably. And so now we, we have to talk about the issue with used cars. So I want a 2011 Chevy Equinox. Um, it gets great gas mileage, achieved with the 2.4 liter Ecotec engine. I buy it unaware that there's a lawsuit out on it, uh, but I can't quite cash in on that lawsuit. I bought in too late. The thing is burning hectic amount of oil, uh, Maybe a gas gets blown. Maybe something else has gone wrong. It needs a new engine. My engine to replace it is $5,500 or $6,000, maybe $4,000. You run into the issue of disposability. And when given an impromptu repair that is wildly more expensive than you would have ever thought, or, the, or it's just so much that you, you don't even think the car's worth it to fix, or you want to get rid of it in the resale value has tanked. You are trapped in these vehicles. And the only way out is to keep dealing with it or you trade in, take the hit. You probably have negative equity now and that's it. A lot of other people have come up with the idea of leasing. This car is really cool, but I know it's unreliable. Let me lease it. Here's the issue with that. You're reinforcing the disposability of new cars. And I hate this, I hate to say this because, man, I drive so many nice cars. It's so easy to just get wrapped up in how cool the new Lincoln Navigator is. Oh man, the seats are just incredibly comfortable. The sound system, great. It's quick, it's quick. Like it's, and it's just this behemoth. It's. It's something else, you know? But then you have to take into account how reliable is this thing actually gonna be? Uh, how much am I spending? How much is it actually worth in a few years? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's, it's a really awful value. Uh, unless you just have stupid amounts of money, this is probably a car that you, should stay, <laughs> you shouldn't poke with a 40-foot stick. The amount of things that can go wrong is, well, it's incomprehensible. Let me say this again. The new Navigator is a phenomenal SUV, and it is new enough where I can't say for certain what the reliability would be, but I'd be wary of the resale value and the complexity of it all affecting maintenance costs down the road. Back to leasing. Leasing cars like, say, a new Jaguar is not cheap since leasing is based off the residual of the car after the term. However, leasing a car because of the unreliability only affirms the descent of dependability as a priority to a manufacturer. It also adds another unreliable used car to the market that in 10 or 15 years could have repairs costing more than the vehicle is worth, leading to it being scrapped. This is not good for the environment. While recycling cars has been becoming more and more effective, it is still estimated that up to 20% of the effect a car has on the environment comes from before and after the car is on the road. Buying or leasing reliable cars new helps the used market and the environment. I work closely with a bunch of different departments in the car industry, whether it's mechanics or sales or sales management, hear from customers. I drive various different vehicles. I'm a lot porter at a dealership. I get to witness BMWs with 150,000 miles that run perfectly. I've also seen numerous ones with half that mileage and several big issues. How an owner takes care of a car is very important to the life of that vehicle. If you could retain three things from this video, I wish that to be one of them. If you're buying a used car, Get it inspected by a trustworthy mechanic at a shop to hopefully shed more light on its past and expose possible repairs. And don't forget that many new dealerships offer free Carfax reports on their used cars. Another great resource to check out before buying a used vehicle is carcomplaints.com. They give you the type of complaint and the amount of complaints for that specific model and issue. My message to buyers and owners alike is this. One, buy responsibly. Do your research on the cars that you purchase. Research common problems with that vehicle. See how much money uh, these common faults cost to repair. It can give you a good idea of how much money other things are to repair on it. 
uh, and what the cost of ownership really is. Another great source is Consumer Reports, cars.com. Check the reviews, the personal reviews, check the reliability ratings on Consumer Reports. You can get a good idea of you know, are, are people having a lot of issues with these things. My second piece of advice, treat your cars with respect. Drive them like you own them, which you, you hopefully do, but this is beyond like, don't hoon it at every like, live, okay, this cop is tailing me. I've seen notoriously unreliable cars with a lot of mileage before just because people took really good care of them, uh, either in their driving habits or their maintenance habits. Stay on it and your car will last longer no matter what. My, my third piece of advice is check the resale values on your cars, please. Before you buy anything, check the resale values. Like say the new Volkswagen Arteon just came out. Okay, so it hasn't been out for a while. How am I supposed to know how, what its resale is? Well, check what the resale value is on the, on the Volkswagen CC. Check what it is on the Volkswagen Passat. Thanks for watching. This isn't a usual segment that I do, but I've wanted to get this off my chest for a while. Reliability is very important. If you want some more down to earth car reviews, they won't be featuring a dog, but I promise you they're pretty freaking good. Um, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Hi. Thank you. You too. You go, buddy. There you go. Man, they were staring at you for so long, buddy. There you go. I know you like a little ice cream. I can left hand shift. This is all fine. Holy. And then also, if you just clicked on this because it was posted to my Instagram or Snapchat and you saw the dog, uh, thank you for watching, but 